hours. The all-Australian famous Hills Hoist, fashioned in 1946 by Lance Hill for his wife, Sherry. Uh, he told me that he would build me a rosary clothes hoist and I wasn't too sold on that. I really didn't mind what it was, as long as it was something for me to hang my clothes on. So, with that, in mind, I get over and I can set them up. We're going to make clotheslines. He told me to hang out the washing, so now it's ease up, ease up, easy, so easy with Hills. You're supposed to take the washing out of the machines first, Bev. <laughs> Even so, Tiny Bev Harold found it the easiest hoist she'll ever use. It's a dream, this new easier wind-up action, and Hills to send a magic glide down without winding at all. But Lance Hill's invention was not the first. There were others that had gone before. At the same time as Hill's, the Arc Weld windmill made its aerodynamic wind-assisted appearance. But 20 years earlier, the James Hardy company came up with the dry well. That was 1925. But that was not the first either. The first one we know about was one made by AC Harley and Company Adelaide Iron Founders by at least 1914. Uh, which was mostly made of timber, but with iron fittings, and which tilted to load it. In the same year, 1914, to our horror and by absolute coincidence, an American contraption also called Hills makes its appearance. It was the champion. This is, of course, the origin of the myth about the Hills hoist being the first type. It's an American company, nothing to do with the Australian company. But surely the gem of them all, and much older than the good professor thought, is what we discovered in picturesque Geelong, in a backyard where it's always been. This is the original and first ever built in 1912 by my uncle Gilbert Toyne. 1912? 1912. And this is the very first one? This is the very first one produced. And so, and so he made it, it, it came into this garden, and yes. it's been here ever since? It's been here ever since, and, yes. And in use? And in use. Harold Toyne's uncle Gilbert, the inventor, had 13 children, which adds up to a lot of washing. To lessen Mrs Toyne's burden, this was his solution. And Harold, the amazing thing is that, that despite 1912 to 2004, and it's so simple, but it works effortlessly. Absolutely. Yes, yes, there's no, been no variation to it. It's just as it was. I think it's sensational that it's, and, in, that uh, it, and that it's, in, it's, in, uh, it's in daily use. And it is in, in regular use, yes. But 1912 is not the start of it all. Hopes of Australia first are about to be dashed. Tucked away in the magnificence of the Victorian State Library are two further rotary revelations. Castle's Household Guide, circa 1870, details the drying machine made by a Mr Kent of High Holborn. As the guide says, In winter, it is only requisite to shovel away the snow from a path leading to the machine, make a space large enough for a person to stand upon, and an entire wash may be hung out and taken in without moving from the spot. But the daddy of them all turns up in Scientific American, no less, in 1855. James R. Higgins of Rockport did it this way. I really didn't know about it myself until this investigation because uh, I knew about the Australian ones, but the overseas ones have been largely a mystery. All right, so the drawing in the 1855 Scientific American, that surprised you? Absolutely. None of this should lessen our sense of national pride. Clearly, Hills was not the first, but as icons go, it undeniably stands tall today. <laughs>